Good morning. It's been two weeks, I think, since we uh, last engaged. Hopefully everything has been going well for you. Three things to talk about today, two a bit more in depth. One, just a uh, FYI. Shomano Holocrank 2 Recall, we're gonna touch on that. Disc Brake Squeal Hell, we're definitely gonna touch on that. And the other thing I'm looking for is where one can get a PhD in mechanical engineering whereby I can figure out how to adjust the strap on Linda's brand new POC helmet. It's tricky. Uh, but first things first, let's go for a ride. <laughs> All right. Back in the usual departure spot, Gamland P3 in the Gatineau Park. You know this by now. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real quick, Holotech 2 Shimano Recall. Apparently this impacts 180,000 crank sets. North America, I believe, not Europe, but I may be wrong on that. Um, it directly impacts me, which is why I'm talking about it. Uh, I've got an Altegra 6800 crank set on my gravel bike slash cyclocross bike. So I dropped it off this morning. Sorry, I dropped it off last evening. And uh, to have it inspected, I've done the back way. you know, we'll see what happens. But I was in, more interested from a bike shop perspective on uh, how do they get compensated for this test. And um, I dropped it off at my friends at Fat Moose, and they were telling me they get a hundred dollars per bike that they inspect, whether they're replacing that crank set or not. Now, the other thing that I'm uh, interested in apparently is if there is something wrong with the crank set cracks, delamination, all that good stuff, catastrophic implications. Um, it could get pretty hairy, right? If something goes wrong, obviously with your crank set. But um, I'm more interested in if they're actually gonna replace it with a brand new Altegra group set or a 6800. Uh, what I've read, and again, I'm not 100% sure on this, is they'll replace it with a crank set, but like a dedicated recall crank set not specific to Altegra or Jure's, which are the two crank sets that are directly impacted by this recall. I will keep you posted on that. So we're uh, towards the end of September now. Uh, foliage? It's turning. It's turning. It's turning. But apparently the bugs are not diminishing. They have regrouped. They have regrouped and they're backed with a vengeance. I don't know what bugs these are. I don't know. Annoying bugs. Uh, yeah. Buzzy bugs. I think that's the official uh, that's the Darwin uh, term. The Darwin term. <laughs> <laughs> they never used to be so annoying. But then through evolution, <laughs> they became more annoying. All right, full loop of the Gatineau Park. Okay, big old loop. Big old looper. Big old looper. Oh. See you in about six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple more weeks uh, for us and a uh, bit of travel news that I will divulge at uh, towards the end of this uh, vlog. We're going somewhere pretty special. Yeah, we are. <laughs> More to come. Let's do some work. Okay, made it to the Champlain Lookout. As you can see, I'm not the only person that made it to the Champlain Lookout. It is just a spectacular day in the nation's capital. It is, uh, I don't know, it's warming up. 20, it's gonna be 23 today, I think, for late September. Ah, bring it. Just gorgeous. Um, a couple of reasons why Linda and I love riding in the park so much is it's close to traffic primarily. On the weekends, uh, they do open it up from noon to traffic. And then in the morning, there's a shuttle to accommodate the hikers who like to come up here. Um, but soon enough, that's gonna to come to an end because as the uh, leaves turn uh, in this boreal forest, I don't even know if it's a boreal forest. I don't even know what that is. Um, you get a lot of uh, sightseers come up here and it's, uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty important for the tourist industry because it is spectacular up here. The colors, the oranges, the reds, the yellows, the greens, the browns, it, uh, it really is something to behold. Um, but unfortunately, it brings a lot of uh, people, a lot of hikers, um, a lot of cars. So uh, we tend to not ride up here so much because obviously with all the beauty, you kind of get distracted. 
And that's not the beauty of just staring at cyclists. That's the beauty of the leaves turning. There you have it. All right. Looks like there's a mass exodus. Time to jump on someone's wheel. First and foremost, guys, I want to apologize for any exterior superfluous sounds. Um, City of Ottawa has taken it upon itself to dig up every road in and around our house. So it's a little noisy right now and major traffic congestion, which sucks. Alrighty. I want to talk about Linda's rear brake. If you saw an episode of the vlog a few weeks ago, I, uh, I took it upon myself to bleed the rear brake. It was very, um, the actuation was very squishy. So, <laughs> never done it before and I thought I'd give it a shot and it turned out pretty good. Um, it certainly made it uh, a little bit more res responsive. But I think what happened was uh, a little bit of the oil um, that is used bled through and um, contaminated the um, the rear caliper that got onto the brake pads and it got a little squeaky that brings us to this week so I'm the type of person that likes to throw money at a problem before really investigating it now I use my friends on YouTube for the most part to try and uh, debug what the problem is and find the best solution whatever you want is on YouTube you know that hell I'm on YouTube that's pretty scary but uh, you want to remove nose hair without sneezing or crying Solution is on YouTube, my friends. I'm not going to put a link in the description below. Research it. So throwing money at the problem. First things first, there was an existing brake rotor that I needed to look at. So let's look at that. There she blows. I think this is, it's a Shimano, 160 millimeter. I believe it is a 105 rotor. And uh, it served Linda very well. I don't know if you can see clearly here. Uh, but there are quite a few stri striations, striations. It's well worn. And, um, but it was working quite well before I did the brake bleed. So first things first, I spent money on three things. First thing that I wanted to throw at the problem was muck off disc brake cleaner. There's stuff on YouTube about this as well. This isn't the only solution. Finish line, make a degreaser slash disc brake cleaner. But I thought I'd give this a shot. Um, did it work? No, no, it didn't. Uh, I think this is best for if you go out on a ride, it's a little mucky, it's a little grim. Um, you bring the bike home, you give it a good wash. I think this is applicable for that kind of solution in terms of cleaning your disc brake rotors. But getting really down deep into the rotor or the brake pads, this is not the best solution. So that was my first investment. Second investment was new brake pads. Same rotor, new brake pads. Did it fix the problem? No, it didn't. So that's an interesting one as well. The brake pads used in this Shimano 105 Grupo are L05A resin brake pads. For some reason, I had a brain cramp when I went to the bike store, I bought J05As. Guess what? They don't fit. However, they did fit on my gravel bike, so I now have new brake pads for my gravel bike. Kind of hard to find brake pads these days, but I did manage to source some and I put them on. Did it fix the solution? Remember, it's a new brake pads, existing rotor. Did it fix it? No, it didn't. So more cleaning, more scouring. I didn't want to go down the sandpaper path. Um, I don't know. I didn't feel comfortable doing that. So I raced out and apparently not only are brake pads in short supply, I thought we were done with all of that global cycling component shortage debacle um, which we went through during covid anyways i went out and i sourced a rotor um, apparently i don't know if they fleeced me but they said uh, they didn't have any 160 millimeter uh, 105 or altegra rotors so i guess what linda got a brand new spanking jurace rotor on there 
It's sexy AF, I gotta tell you that much. Now, I threw that on. Remember, that's a brand new rotor and brand new brake pads. Did it fix the problem? No, not really. Linda said the braking is fine. Ultimately, I think the issue is a bedding in problem. I don't know, tell me what you think. Okay guys, that's a wrap. Final bit of news that I wanted to share with you. We are off on Thursday. We're heading to the beautiful country of Greece. Greece. <laughs> Linda's so excited. It is uh, Sunday today and she's already packed. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, it won't be a vlog for a couple of weeks. We're going to be uh, island hopping in and around the Aegean Sea. Yeah. yeah, so it's, uh, we're heading off. We're going to go to uh, Athens, then uh, on to uh, Crete, Heracleion, and make our way to Santorini, and then back to Athens for a couple of days. It's going to be awesome. So uh, be good while we're away, and um, some footage of our Greek adventure uh, when we get back. We will regroup. Take care. Chat in a few. Bye-bye.